is Candace, and you're now watching DWF. Hi, Candace. How are you? Welcome to BWF. Hi, Kiwi. How are you? I'm great. I have some questions. It's great sitting down talking to you. I love your plays. It's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, let's get right into it. Where are you from? Originally from Natchez, Mississippi. At least that's where I was born. But, I mean, New Orleans is my home. Yeah. Raised, fed, and bred here. Yes. All day. Mm -hmm. All day. All day. How long have you been in New Orleans? All my life. Um... Uh, all my life, I was just born in Mississippi, mm -hmm. you know, so I do have roots there. You know, mm -hmm. my mother uh, was born there, grandparents born there, father born there. Uh, and But, you know, I was raised here. How old were you when you moved to New Orleans? Uh, I was an arm baby. Uh, not even a year old. Okay. Not even a year so, old. Yeah, you've been here all your life. All my life. Okay. Describe living in New Orleans. You know I know, but I want to <laughs> you describe living in New Orleans. Living in New Orleans. New Orleans haven't always been what it is now. You know, I can remember as a child living here and having real fond memories, you know, even though uh, we went, my mother was in a struggle, my mother and my grandmother. I was uh, raised in a two-parent household, but, you know, different from what other children was raised in, you know, because mm -hmm. it was two women, my right. mom and my grandmother. And, uh, and and you know, it was a struggle. You know, she mm -hmm. made it look easy, yeah. you know, uh, to us, because I didn't even realize we were poor, you mm -hmm. know what I'm right. saying? Because, <laughs> you know, we always had food to eat mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, uh, mo we moved a lot, right? Mm -hmm. We moved a lot, and I thought that we was moving a lot because this woman was balling out of control. <laughs> we moved a lot because she kept getting fucking eviction notices and shit, you know. Oh, no, a lot of people can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I didn't know it at yeah. that time, mm -hmm. you know, so, but... One thing I can say about my mom, she was resilient and she never left us. That's right. You know what I'm saying? She did what she had to do as a black woman. That's right. You know, raising five children, um, being a mother from the age of 13. She mm. was 13 when she had her first child. And, you know, she she did the damn thing. I miss her. Yeah, I know you do. I know yeah. you do. You received a hefty and unjust prison sentence. Do you mind telling us about that? No, I don't mind at all. Um, I've got a lot of my, uh, I think, a lot of my working skills from my mom. You know, she was a bona fide hustler. I think if you define that word and uh, put her in a dictionary, her picture would be by it. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I just, it was just one of those things that was, uh, given to me, you know, mm -hmm. by her, you know, uh, mm -hmm. knowing how to hustle at an early age. Yeah. So uh, that being said, you know, I brought those skills to uh, biz in the business world, mm -hmm. you know, and opened up uh, pain management clinics and pharmacies and, you know, even dibbled and dabbled in the entertainment world and stuff yeah. like that with Jamical Entertainment. We had magazines and you name it, we was doing it, you know. Um, yeah, I heard but, you all were working on movies and everything. Yeah, yeah, girl, we were working on movies with people like Bokeem Woodbine. Mm -hmm. I remember Angela Bassett was going to be uh, play a cameo uh, in, in one of our films. Uh, and, yeah, we, we were doing mm -hmm. it. We were doing it. You know, right. I would like to say we were doing it. I worked with people like Aubrey Francis, uh Kiwi, Michelle Latner, uh, yeah, so yeah, we was doing it. Um, but the, the hefty sentence um, that uh, you asked me about, yeah, 12 years, 7 months. Wow. That uh, was given to me by man, but God said something different, mm -hmm. you know, and I ended up doing 7 years from yeah. that and, uh, you know, leaving my babies was the hardest oh, part. Oh, yes. 
You know, nothing that they took from me, not, none of the millions, none of the cars, none of the jewelry, none of that didn't amount to uh, me having to leave them. And how many kids do you have? Three, three daughters. Three daughters. And how old were they when you got sentenced? Eight, nine, and 16. God, My oldest that was daughter hard. had just turned 16. That was the last thing I was able to do for her, give her um, 16th birthday party. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Describe that birthday party. Girl, it was uh, it was it was awesome. She always uh would tell me she wanted to open up her own business and stuff like that. So she was into fashion a lot. A mm -hmm. lot. You know, I think that if I would have been home she really would have did some amazing things, right? Mm -hmm. So uh uh her stepdad and I got her this building mm -hmm. and he redid the whole building and uh we put uh, all these uh what are these things called mannequins in there mm -hmm. with uh clothes that I actually had the clothes made what she had designed. Oh wow. And made for her and they were on all the mannequins oh. and things like that. Oh, wow. Um Bernal Teller sung there. Um, Bernal Teller, who was on American Idol, mm -hmm. he sung there, and uh, it was just amazing, man. It was just mm -hmm. amazing, uh, and and she really enjoyed herself. I gave her a money tree, a six foot tall money tree. Oh, I know she. <laughs> I know she loved that. When she you did. speak of her stepdad, are you talking about the now deceased Mr. Plez Dobbins? No, I'm not talking about players. I'm talking about Deshaun Watt. Deshaun, okay. Yeah. Okay, Deshaun. Uh -huh. Shout out to Deshaun. Shout out to your baby. Yes. So, um, what was prison like for you? It wasn't a walk in the park. People think prison is a, a place of rehabilitation. And it's not. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, go in there worse than, come out worse than what they did when they went in. Yeah. You know, because you encounter so many different spirits. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it wasn't a walk in the park. It wasn't, it was hard at times, you know, when you used to having everything and, and, and then, you know, not having anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have people to send me a, a dollar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and in prison, it costs to live in prison. Believe yeah. it. Yeah. You know, you have to get your commissary, and that's where all your toiletries come in at. Mm -hmm. These people ain't giving you shit. They're not giving you no no soap and all that mm -hmm. stuff like that to bathe with, no toothpaste to brush your teeth with. You got to mm -hmm. buy all that stuff. So, wait, so, let, let's back up a minute. You're telling me uh, all the millions. By the way, when you went in, how many millions did you have? Uh, the, the feds um, robbed me of over $12 million wow. in the bank. And uh, they had uh, 600 and some thousand dollars in one of the manager's houses who, who, uh, who was working for me, who ended up working against me. Um, and they had $483,000 in my house. Mm -hmm. And they took all of that. They didn't even record wow. that. That's money that they pocketed. That they pocketed. Yeah. Is it true, because we heard rumors, you know, and there were rumors, that you had money buried all around New Orleans? I should have had money buried. Yeah. I should have. But, yeah, that's just rumors. It's not true. Wow. I didn't. Wow. Um. So out of all those people you helped, you did no one helped you out. No, it's a funny thing because um, you know that that's one of the things that bothered me the most um, being in there because if they didn't help me, they could have at least helped my children. Oh, you know, yes. uh, and uh, they didn't. You know, uh, D was actually in prison. When you say D, I'm speaking of Deshaun. Okay. Yeah, he went to prison. He had caught a 20 year bid. Mm. He was also on a case with me. He got out from that case and went back. Mm. And um, when he went to prison, he got work release and he still was sending me money. Oh, wow. You know, and I was able to survive like that. 
Um, but uh, this other young lady, you know, her and her sister, you know, they would send me money from time to time. Mm -hmm. And I really, really appreciate that. I don't know if I could say her name or not, you know, but. You you can say her name. Uh, Ke Nakeisha. Um, her and her sister, Dion, really, uh, you know, helped me out a whole lot. You know, mm -hmm. Keisha was uh, a little sister to me okay. then, mm -hmm. you know, um, and she really, really, she blessed me, okay. you know, and my daughter, Mia, you know, she was just a child. But, you know, if she could send me 15 or 25 dollars, she did that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. on a regular yeah. as much as she could. And that's how I got by. Um. How and what was your transition from prison? Transitioning from prison to the halfway house um, is where I first went. And girl, when I came home, I didn't have a pair of drawers, okay? I had a dollar and 83 cents. They give you these little cards, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and they'd be fancy with it. The mm -hmm. card was worth more than I had on it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's what I had. I still have the card. It was a dollar and 83 cent on it. And when mm -hmm. I got to the halfway house, uh, my sister came and, and Mia came mm -hmm. and they brought me, you know, little things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, after, after, you know, I had been there a day or so, you know, you got to get, you have to get into the system and all that stuff like that mm -hmm. and people can come. And, and see you and stuff. Um, but that's where, what they... That's so where was the prison located? Well, I was in several prisons. Which one? Where I did all my time? Yeah, where you did. Where well, you I transitioned did. from. What state? I was in Tallahassee, Florida. And the halfway house was... In New Orleans. Okay. On St. Anthony Street. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's where I did all my time. And I did in Tallahassee but before that I was in Marianne I was in a camp mm -hmm. and I got shipped the fuck out of there for a cell phone mm -hmm. that wasn't mine you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. but the girl she was blessing me so much with the cell phone you know mm -hmm. I was able to talk to my children I couldn't tell the people that ain't my goddamn cell phone yeah I would have never done that you know yeah. so uh anyways I'm That's smiling right. because yeah for real it cool. really is um and they shipped me from there to Tallahassee, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, the people that I met in Tallahassee, mm -hmm. um, it was just unbelievable. The the love that you know uh, people show you on the inside, mm -hmm. you know, from on the inside. Yeah, you know, I found you know more more loyalty and family in the people on the inside mm -hmm. than I did on the outside. Give us some examples. I mean, prison, you, you actually build your family. You know what I'm saying? I had a, a prison mom, mm. Miss Kamubaka, girl, that she was, man, she really thought she had delivered me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I had prison sisters, uh, Nikki and, uh, and Nita. I had prison children, mm -hmm. you know, Tay. Uh, I had, uh, and, and Portia, I had prison nieces, mm -hmm. uh, Shannon, that's my heart, and, and Big Portia, another one of my hearts, and Nessa, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and it was just like, we, we were family. Which one of these people that you mentioned stood out the most and taught you um, values or taught you skills that you took and you're, you're still using them now? Definitely, Miss Kamalaka. First of all, I want to tell people, you know, Miss Kamalaka don't need to be in prison. They need to free this old lady um, because she was actually a, um, a model citizen mm -hmm. in the community. Um, held seven degrees, um, mm -hmm. spoke nine different languages, and all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. And they really railroaded her. Um, the, the feds did. They really, really did. Um, Wow. But her, Miss Kamuvaka, I could imagine what she was like on the outside because on the inside she was motherly and and caring and you know and and just you know she was put you in your place. You got yeah. out of place, you got out of line, you know. 
um, cursing and all that stuff in front of her, she wasn't happy. Oh, wow. You yeah. know, and I was a grown ass yeah. woman. I just want to tell her that when she see this here. But, you know, uh, the level of respect and love that I have for her is unmeasurable. I learned a lot from her spiritually um, and really how to uh, maneuver through that type of situation because mm-hmm. um, really praying was the key, yes. you know. And when you in that type of situation, you forget about prayer. You mm-hmm. feel like you've been betrayed by God, mm-hmm. you know. And she was one of those people that, you know, that that really, really laid it down. God didn't betray me, man did. That's right. You know, and you can't hold nothing against God. And yes. that's who delivered me. Yes. You know, and and for that I will always thank her. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And never forget her. Never forget her. Ever. That's right. Do you um how do you feel? Because you I did my homework and stuff and I've been doing the homework for years. And I came across, I compared your story to um, Caucasian, our Caucasian female counterparts. And I realized they was getting one year compared to all those years they'd given you. And they had worse charge, even charges of murder. Yeah, with, um, it was one lady that I ran across in there. And uh, she and I was cool. We had the same type of business, pain management, mm-hmm. um, same charges. Mm-hmm. And uh, whereas they crippled me, and I know race played a big part. Mm-hmm. Of course. And um, uh, this lady, she got a year and a day. And it was mm-hmm. murders on her on, on her case and everything. What type of murders? Like um, people that had OD from... Um, you know, the, the uh, pills that the doctors had wrote for them, you know, mm-hmm. at her clinic. Mm-hmm. You know, it was about five or six different people had OD. Mm-hmm. And, uh-huh. and, uh, this and they girl, gave her a year? A year and a day. Oh. A year and a day. And she only did 10 months off of that year and a day. And whereas they gave me 12 years, seven months. And she didn't have no children. Mm-hmm. You know, same, same. Same charges. Isn't, but ex- yeah. minus, I didn't have no, we didn't have no murders. Yeah. In ours. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. That's yeah. so unfortunate. Yeah, it is. It's really unfortunate. And whereas they charging the little fish, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They should be charging these big ass companies mm-hmm. because we're not the maker of the drugs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, we had legitimate businesses. I'm not telling you everything that went on in the business was absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get up here and tell that lie. Right. But uh, we had legitimate businesses mm-hmm. and um, those doctors wrote prescriptions mm-hmm. and these patients was to follow uh, how, you know, the prescriptions was written after the pharmacist filled the prescriptions. But at the end of the day, it, it, you know, the drugs don't come from the clinics or the pharmacies. That's right. They come from the pharmaceutical companies. Mm-hmm. But they get slaps on the wrist, mm-hmm. if anything at all. Right. Or if they wiped. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That part. Because you look at it, it's so obvious. It is. You yeah, had, it is. You had licensed physicians mm-hmm. working in your clinic. Every one of them that was in there was licensed. With yeah. different specialties. Yeah. We had pain management doctors in there, mm-hmm. anesthesiologists, mm-hmm. you know, um, nephrologists. All these people have some type of specialty, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, they, they fucked over us. Yeah. You know, because the majority of the physicians there was African American, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The majority. We only had a couple of. Um, Caucasians that worked in there, which were, you know, they were, they were cool, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it was one black doctor that got caught up with us, Dr. Bro, old man, Um, and it's just, you know, it's sickening to even think about, because, you know, I know we were done wrong. Mm -hmm. I know I was. Yeah. I spoke to someone attorney on your case well not on your case but study the case and he's a Caucasian 
And he said, definitely, you were done wrong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I laid in that place for years and, you know, and studied the law. You know, um, they did have a law library in there and I got with a couple of ladies in there, including the lady who only got the year. And she really felt bad for me. Mm -hmm. She knew what it was, though. She knew race played a big issue. The the you white know, lady. Mm -hmm, the white woman. Mm -hmm. She knew um, race um, played a big issue, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and her case was based out of Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and in Louisiana, and, and um, you know, it'd be your own kind. Mm -hmm. Because the person who um, prosecuted me, she was one of us. Mm -hmm. And when I say like that, what I mean by that, a black woman with children, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, she didn't look at the fact that I had children or anything. Yeah. You know, she just looked at it, at whatever the fuck they brought her on paper. She didn't know me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what she went by. Do you mind um, letting us know the, the name of the person who prosecuted you? Tracy Knight. Tracy Knight? Uh-huh. Um, do you think she had a vendetta against you? Well, I mean, the way that um, it, if if I looked at it from my point of view, yeah, mm -hmm. because I mean, you 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 know, you threw me to the wolves, Miss, and 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 she didn't even know me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And she acted as if she did, or if I had done somebody in her family some shit. Mm -hmm. You know, twelve yeah. years, seven months. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a criminal background. I wasn't none of that. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. And I remember going to. The uh, over there by um, the federal courthouse, and with my children, with two of my children, Courtney and Johnson, my two younger uh, children, and this lady put them in a room and let them watch cartoons while she in another room nailing me to the cross. God, that's evil. That's evil. Oh, that's evil. Um. And they do all this, you know, um, for uh, um, recognition, I guess. Yeah, the climb up. And this, and this, and this old fucked up ass system. Yeah, yeah. If you had anything, if she's watching, what would you tell her? Um, what would I tell her? I wouldn't have done you like you done me. I wouldn't have, um, I would have at least considered your children. And if you felt like I had a problem, then why didn't you put me in rehabilitation? Prison is not a place to be rehabilitated. Y'all took me out of the lives of my children for years. That's yeah. all I would tell. Mm -hmm. Think about yeah. it. And it can happen to you. Yeah. It happened to the mayors. It happens to so many other people. And you're not above the law that you make. That's right. Believe it. Yeah. Because it wasn't a rehabilitation. It was a punishment. It was. It absolutely was. Yeah. I totally agree. It absolutely was. And I wasn't the only somebody got punished. My children got punished. That's right. You know, That's right. And, and they got punished. They're still telling me about the horror stories. Yeah. Yeah. Or what they had to endure. What they endured. Wow. They're still telling me. And I've been home four years now. Four. And they're still telling me. But I'm proud of them. Mm -hmm. All of them graduated from high school. What can I <sighs> And they're doing amazing things. Yeah. They're working in a community with people who have mental illnesses. Yes. Yeah, let's um, talk about that. Yeah. That was my next question. <laughs> like, what are you working on Thanks. now? And uh, I know you uh, you push your daughters to be entrepreneurs. And let's talk about that. I have three wonderful daughters, wonderful in their own ways. Um, I can see each of them. I see me in each of them. Me, yeah. Courtney, and Jossie. Um, Courtney blessed me with a grandson uh and i love him yes. he's the highlight of my life yes. he is. he's adorable <laughs> he is the highlight of my life uh and i'm proud of the type of mother she is but mm -hmm. mia courtney and jossie have um they they got together they teamed up mm -hmm. 
and um, they opened up this place, Metamorphosis Transformation, out in New Orleans East. And uh, that's exactly, you know, the name stands behind exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's going to be a transformation made in, in people's lives. You know, that's their, their plan, mm -hmm. you know, um, to help children of incarcerated parents. Oh, yeah to help um, mothers who have lost their children, to help, um, you know, um, fathers who have been incarcerated. They have these type of people on their board, you mm -hmm. know, to counsel mm -hmm. and to mentor. And, uh, you know, they have a studio inside the place. They mm -hmm. have a, a game room inside the place. They basically ministering to the total man, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, yeah. Ministering to, to them by way of counseling, mm -hmm. but through music, through, um, you know, all that type of stuff like that. Through it's, it's, art? I was reading art, the aspects of art. Through art, art, yeah. Art, yeah. yeah. And it, actually, uh, music is art, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would like people to really get involved with them. That's important. You know, get That's involved, important. you know, because they suffered mm -hmm. from PTSD when I left. And yes. that's what they was telling me, you know. Yes. Um, Courtney started stealing. Really? Yeah. She started stealing, um, like, yeah. makeup and stuff like yeah. that. You, you know? would never know that looking at her. Like, she's, like, she started so stealing. professional. Yeah, she, she, she did. She said, Mom, I felt like I, I needed to do this to keep my appearance up in school mm -hmm. because you wasn't there. You know, my sister did the best she could, but she, you know, she had her own shit going on. You yeah. know, and uh, and then we had our own shit going on, me and my sister. Yeah. You know, um, we are over it now. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord. You know, um, but this is the reality of it. Mm -hmm. You know, things was going on. She was on the case with me. Oh, we, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we really. That sister. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we, we really had some stuff going on. But that is the only sister that I had that came through. Mm. Yeah, I do have another one, but, mm. you know, my other siblings didn't come through, you know, yeah. and they know they didn't. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, do you, do you know why they didn't come through? No, I, I really don't know. You know, for a long time, uh, I felt like uh, they only love me as much as I can give them. Mm. They only love me for as mm -hmm. much as I can give them, if yeah. that make any sense. Yeah. You know, when you don't have shit to give people no more, they don't love you no more. Yeah. It doesn't matter who they are. Mm. You know, so. Ooh. And and that's what I, I honestly feel. Mm -hmm. So when I wasn't there to give them anything anymore, you know, they wasn't there to give me that fake ass love. Yeah. And a lot of people can relate. You know, you think about a lot of people who went to prison. They have the same story. I have spoke to so many people. And I remember um, speaking to Freeway Rick Ross. And I asked him, I'm like, let's talk. Of all the people that you looked out for and helped, how many can you rely on and call on today? And he shocked me with the answer. I thought he was going to say five. He said zero. Hmm. It don't shock me, oh. because until you don't, you know, walk the mile in somebody else's shoes, you can't understand exactly um, where they're coming from. But freeway, I walk that mile, and I know exactly where you're coming from, brother. I know, you know, and that's painful. Yeah, you know, because people that you would have, you know, given your last to, took your shirt off and given to. Mm -hmm. Those people, they they didn't, you know, they didn't return none of that, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I didn't look for really, I honestly didn't look for nobody to give me anything in prison. Yeah, I didn't. But my children was under the, you know, under the hands of man yeah. and they couldn't take care of themselves. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, if I would have left adults out here, then that would have been different. I would have seen things different, but I love babies. Yeah. That's the hardest. Yeah. That's the hardest. Um, well, let's talk more about the medical center. Is it basically going to be like mental health 
Um, or just talk about that. Like, is it? Going it to is. It's, it's, it's catering to um, the transformation of the mind, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because mental mental illness starts in the mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you don't get that fixed, um, you know, like the old saying goes, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah. Um, so that's that's basically what it's going to be, you know, mm-hmm. the transforming of the mind mm-hmm. um, by, by any means necessary. Whatever yeah. we can do uh, to help people in whatever area of mental health that they're going through because it's mm-hmm. different breakdowns of that. Yeah. You know, people suffer from phobias. They suffer from all kinds of PTSD, anxiety, insomnia. Yes. And there's so many different components to mental illness yes until it ain't even funny autism autism yeah Yeah. so yeah um and we we're trying to pair our um people up with people who have actually had those experiences that have overcame them Mm -hmm. you know so and that's what i know metamorphosis will be different like my daughters they've experienced their mom and their dad yeah. Being away from them mm-hmm. and going to prison. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yes. that's why, you know, they will be able to be such a great help to children who are parents are incarcerated. Yeah. Or who have been incarcerated. Yeah. The separation anxiety and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Each of them told me something different. You know, I don't know if they want me to say it on here. And um, and in fact, I won't, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because I feel like they was telling me that, you know, at their most vulnerable moments. But mm-hmm. um, each of my children suffered something different yeah. than me being gone. Yeah. You know, some was worse than the others. Um, but, you know, by the grace of the Most High God, you know, they have overcame a lot of this. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. And they went to counseling. Mm-hmm. All, all three of them went to counseling. And you would say counseling, counseling helped. Yeah, it did. Mm-hmm. Because the person who they went to counseling with, um, this lady, she was a, uh, she was a, uh, she had suffered from a lot. Mm-hmm. She had suffered from a lot, yeah. and had overcame, you know, a lot. So mm-hmm. she was able to relate to them when they came there with all of their issues. Yeah, yeah. You know. And this was a person just had experienced a lot. She's just a counselor. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? She don't have the A, B, C, D, E, F, G alphabet. Yeah, yeah but you know, you, a lot of times you, know, you know, she have that. that experience. That's right. You know, and so, and that's what I believe and we believe, you know, um, their center is going to be different. Yeah. Because they work with people who have experienced. Yeah. Um, Regarding this, who would you like to work with? Oh, girl, I would like to work with um, Taraji. Yeah. That's my girl. Um, she cook yum candy. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to work with um, Lil Wayne, yeah. who was actually my neighbor at one time in East Oval. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Wayne Phenomenal, man. Yes, he is. And he's also suffering from some different things, but I know that the brother get through. Yeah. Um, I would like to work with uh, this is young rapper. Um, I've been reading about him. Uh, I believe his name is G Herbal. G Herbal. G Herbal. G Herbal. Mm-hmm. G yes. Herbal. Yeah. From yeah. Chicago. Yeah. G yeah. Herbal. From Chicago. Yeah. And, um, look. Pull power to you, man. And um, I would like to work with you. If you see this, please get in touch. You know what I'm saying? Send me a number or something so I can get in touch with you. You're phenomenal. You're phenomenal. And I like what you're doing. Yes. It's helping. It really is. You know? It really is because my son, um, he's going through some things and he listens to Polo G. You know, these rappers did. I, and, not Paul G. I'm sorry. We're going to fix that. So my son listens to G Herbal and Polo G. I know you told me you mentioned Polo G too, that he was one of them that you would like to get on board. Uh, my son listens to G Herbal because he says uh, G Herbal talks a lot about 
uh, PTSD and anxiety because of what he had to go through growing up, witnessing murders and stuff like that. And, you know, living in New Orleans, that's all we see. That's we all. we have been be surprised. We have been traumatized. Yeah. You know, yeah. me and myself just seeing someone brains just blowing all over my pants and stuff like that. Like we are walking around here traumatized and the people doing the shootings and the murders, these people have issues too. Like they are freaking high functioning autistic people walking around here that don't know what the hell is wrong with them. And they don't feel normal because they, they have been underdiagnosed. And these are the people that Candace is trying, that they want, metamorphosis want to hear from. Absolutely. You know. And, you know, it, it starts in the home. I, I can remember when I was a child. And, you know, we if if you said something was wrong, they'll say some shit like, it's your crazy ass out of here. Nobody wanted to be looked at yeah. as crazy. Yeah. You know, um, they didn't even understand that they was mentally ill from saying stuff like that's that. That's right. You know, and um, we were taught to be, you know, so strong. And mm-hmm. if you break, you're weak. Yeah. And if you're weak, you're beat. Yes. And all of that stuff like that. So we hid a lot of things. Mm-hmm. We hid a lot of yeah. that pain. Yeah. And so when, when it when it come crashing down on you, mm-hmm. you know, you don't know what to do. So right. people result to so many different things, you know, mm-hmm. pulling a gun, killing them. You know what I'm saying? Trying to escape what's yeah. really going on in the inside and not being able to express themselves. That's right. You know, and when you can't go, a lot of us, a lot of these children to date, they can't go to their moms. Yeah. You know, and God only knows where the daddy at. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mama right. need help us out. Yeah. Mentally. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So the advice that she probably would give the child would make mm-hmm. them probably kill itself mm-hmm. instead of somebody else. I'm just being honest. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's it's like, you know, stop calling your children crazy. Stop calling them stupid and all this mm-hmm. stuff like that. If they have a problem, talk to them. And if you can't talk to them, at least you need to have sense enough to find somebody else who you feel like can talk to your child. You know what I'm saying? We can't always talk to them because we don't always have the right advice to give them. I understand that. I understand mm-hmm. that as a parent. You know what I'm saying? But understand this. Find some help that you feel like will be able to help your child. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, that's great advice, Candace. What are you currently working on now besides the metamorphosis? You personally. Oh girl. In my in my um in my grown age, yo, because I didn't grow up. I'm doing this yike juice. What is it called again? Yike. 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 Juice. Yes. That sounds so. interesting. <laughs> and it is. Um, it's a hundred percent all natural. Uh and uh it's a, actually a male enhancer, but it gets that thing rock hard. I'm telling you, and let me tell you something, you too many brothers, y'all can call me. Y'all can call me, and I promise I won't tell on you. Call I'll, her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you what you need to take it over there. To get with your woman or your women or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, call me. Yes, yike juice. Yike juice. Yes. And it's 100% natural. 100% That's interesting. natural. We, because we all are looking for natural, nothing Absolutely. fake. Absolutely, yeah. From these pharmaceutical companies. Yeah, we don't give you nothing to give you no heart attack, no um, Viagra and all that stuff like that. This is a 100% natural. 100%. Everything you need, you can find it naturally. You don't have to take all those drugs and stuff for things to work for you. Yeah. I'm telling you. And um, does it help with men who's impotent? Because they have men who's on blood pressure medicine. And yeah, it's, it's all natural. Yes. yes. I actually had somebody who um, asked that question a little while ago uh, because he's on blood pressure medicine. Mm-hmm. And uh he was asking the same thing. This stuff ain't gonna give me no heart attack, this, that, and the third. It's gonna work. And I say, listen, I sent him some. I said, try it on me. 
And guess what? He became a customer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. Doing that and um, also going to be working with BET. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, Can you talk about it? Uh, the subject matter? or Well, I know that I'm going to be on um, one of their shows. Okay. Uh, Y'all can see me there. Beat me there. Yeah. Like they say in the fake ass churches. Don't see me there. What they say? Don't yeah, see me don't there. Beat me there. there. Beat me there. <laughs> <laughs> beat beat, yeah, beat well, them there so they can steal your money. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I love Kiwi. She's something serious. You hear? Tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. That's what's going to set you free. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Y'all you know, see me on um, you know, BET. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's gonna be global. Thank you. You're yeah. going to be also, it's, it's global. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just only on BET at first, but it's going to be on um, Hulu, uh, uh, Prime, uh, Netflix. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Y'all you know, see me on there. That's, that's a great platform to tell your story. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a great platform. How did you um how did they approach you with that? Yeah, they approached me, you're right. Uh actually a friend of mine who was a prosecutor who got prosecuted oh. told them about me. Yep. Okay. And when the girl first called, uh, well she called me through Messenger, I thought it was a a prank call or something because everybody they play on Facebook, they play on Facebook, yeah, and Instagram and all that. You know, mm-hmm. they stunt for the gram and all that. You know, they get down mm-hmm. for Facebook, yes, Lord. they tweet for Twitter. Y'all know how they do it, all that <laughs> shit. Um, but when she told me the name, uh, who, who had told her about me, mm-hmm. I knew it was real, yeah, yeah. And so, here we are, here we are. And have you started filming yet? No, not yet. It's coming soon. Okay. Um, yeah, coming real soon. Okay. So, uh, also, I heard there's a drink, a wine. I'm looking at it. I've been looking at it a whole while. Oh, Lord. Yeah. 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 It's called yeah. One Hope. That's it. One Hope. I love that name. Uh, I'll be working with this company. Mm-hmm. Uh, this company, I, I did my research on them, and they big with charity, yeah. you know, and that's what made me really want to uh, work with them mm-hmm. because of, you know, what they do for charity. Okay. Uh, we given uh, all kind of little wine and cheese parties and things like that, and you know, they'll be able to purchase their wine through me. This wine is real good, too. It's tasty. It's tasty. It, it really, really is. I've tasted all of them. Mm-hmm. One night I was in here drunk. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is really good. I like this particular one to eat with my spaghetti. Okay. The spaghetti one. one. Yeah. Rose. Yeah. Man, it's really, really, it's good. Yeah, I read about them, too. And one of their slogans is, um, they said they are a catalyst for change. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Me too. Yeah, I love Me that. Me too. Uh-huh. Because, you know, that applies to you. It does. I mean, I know that, you know, you still have that hustle that in you and you're, it's legal. Not saying what you did wasn't legal back then, but. You no, know, all of it wasn't legal. Right. Really. Yeah. But I can tell you one thing. I'm looking at you and I'm looking at your jewelry. <laughs> And this is a little gift. It's beautiful. Thank you. Rolex shit. <laughs> Rolex. Yeah. The diamond guy, I forgot his name, who comes and check the authenticity of diamonds. It will light up green. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. No, it was a gift. It was, it a, was gift. a gift. Um, it was a gift from a friend. Mm-hmm. Seriously. And That's a very special friend. He is. Yeah. He is. He, he really loves you. I think he do. Yeah. I think he do. <laughs> <laughs> great. What a great friend to have. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. 
It was nice talking to you, Candice. Thank um, you. Do you want to shout out anyone before we end this interview? Absolutely. Um, I definitely want to um, shout out um, Dan, my boy, who's actually giving me the opportunity to do this. Um, and I just want y'all to know if you ever in need of a real media company who's not going to take advantage of you, who's going to actually put you out there, y'all need to get in touch with BWF. And his name is Dan, and his wife's name is Kiwi Humble People. You know what I'm saying? That love to see people, uh, dreams become reality. And um, with that being said, my grandson, Ryus. Hi, Ryus. I got two grandbabies coming, and uh, and that's it. Yeah. And myself, of course. Yes. <laughs> Not on Candice. Candice. You know, <laughs> Candice is winning, you guys. She's winning. Yeah. This I'm, I'm so thrilled to see you and to see you smiling and back on your grind. Thank you. Um, they couldn't break you. You know, they and you're moving on to bigger and better things. I appreciate that. I receive it. Yeah. I really do yeah. receive it. And she's so beautiful, y'all. Can I tell your age? Yeah, you can tell them. 50 years old, y'all. I'm 85. <laughs> <laughs> 50 years old. Beautiful. <laughs> I, I told her I was like, you know, no time is doing no time is good in prison, but she did great time. Yeah. She's gorgeous, y'all. Well, you. it's BWF Kiwi signing out, y'all. Hope you all find this video interesting. And please check on your um people with mental health issues. Please. It's real out there. And if, transformation. That's right. If you all are in the area, um, you don't have to be in the area, but um Louisiana, Georgia, Texas, Mississippi, hit up Metamorphosis Transformation. Transformation in New Orleans East. And the information is going to be in the, in the description. In the description um, if you're interested, okay? But please check on your people. And I want to say this in closing, just because metamorphosis transformation is in New Orleans does not mean we can't can't help you guys. You know, um, we do have a 1-800 number and you can call that number if you're in a crisis. Call, talk to somebody. Call, talk to somebody. Please. Please. Peace out. Peace out. Bye, y'all.